Hello, Randy Rain here, and I have another one of these Tomitronic 3D games. Now, I've already done this one. This is the Sky Attack. This one is called Thundering Turbo. Now, I think there's at least one more of these games out there, maybe two. But anyway, these things go for crazy money on eBay. Now, I don't know if they're getting that much for them or they're just asking that, but I have seen them go for a pretty good price but every once in a while a broken one will come along and they're not that hard to fix let me show you how now this one the sky attack this is the first one I refurbished only thing wrong with it is it needed a new battery terminal you can see this one's been replaced and the rubber membrane buttons were worn out so I replaced it with these plastic buttons with nice clicky buttons but you can see my paint is wearing off on my 3d printed buttons now here's the one I'm going to be repairing now I can't decide if it needs to be retro bright or not I mean it could be that color I don't know how white it was supposed to be so I'm just going to clean it up but if you look inside you can see these battery terminals are all corroded as well I don't know if these buttons are worn out or not, but this red one's all tore up. And plus, I really like the clicky of these buttons, so I'm going to replace these as well. And I'm going to make them hard, solid colored plastic and replace both of these. And of course, this one's missing the strap, but I have a plan for that. Time to take this guy apart. I'll go ahead and desolder these. Now these games are in color, but they're not using color LCD. Color LCD didn't exist back then. So light has to come in through here, and it's bouncing off a mirror here. And then it goes through colored graphic sheet. And if I understand this correctly, instead of the LCD black part showing the vehicle outline, everywhere else is going black and letting and just letting light through a certain section or something like that. But here's the mirror. And this piece comes off and now this piece lifts up okay here's the speaker it's kind of melted in these things You can see the switch here, and here's the rubber pieces. Now to look in here. And there's the LCD. And here's the double image of the graphics. Here's what it looks like inside here. And I need to clean this, so this has to come out. Got to remember which way is down. And if I want to clean, I'm going to clean everything. So pop this tab. that tab. Gotta clean these lenses. And here's the mirror. Gotta clean that. I need to get this decal off and when I put it back on I'm gonna have to make it better. But first I gotta get it off. I'm gonna use a hair dryer.
Hmm, maybe it does need some retro brighting. I'm going to retro bright. I can't leave this decal on. And I don't know if I can get it off without destroying it. Let's find out. I guess now I have to retro bright it. Be careful with that. That's just a piece of polished metal. You can easily scratch that. I got this all nice and clean. Went like that, I'm pretty sure. And you have a piece of polarized lens here. And this will come off. So be careful, but if it does come off, just push it back down. It just sets. There's rubber connection on either side here. This goes here. Like that. So now I need to take this one apart and see what I did with those buttons and recreate it. You can see what I did is I 3D printed these out and they had these little wings on them that keeps them from falling through. I had to grind down little sections here so that the button would fit flat. And you can see I just soldered these little buttons here and that's what the plastic pushes down onto. And you can see these buttons are starting to wear the paint off. So I just need to go ahead and make some good ones. So I'll make a mold of these, but better clean them up first. Here's the little buttons that I'm using. Tiny, tiny little poles to solder to. The first thing to do is to tin these little leads here. And now I have to solder this little tiny thing to these little stripes here. So these came out pretty nice. I mean, there's I can still see like a shadow or a little outline or a little bit different there where the decal was. Same here, but I really have to look. So those are good enough. Now down to here. I have two bad terminals here. This one, the rivet is corroded as well. But the metal, it's pretty good. Over here, the rivet is still good, but the metal, it's about to break, it feels like. And if you look on the back, it's going to be breaking in there. Because there's no corrosion around here. Where on the back side of this one, the corrosion's already going over to here. But the metal's better. Huh. I'm going to try to keep this one and clean it up. But this one, 
It's like a loose tooth. It needs to just come out. There you go. And that, and that one I guess I will replace. Okay, for this one I'm going crazy. Louisiana hot sauce. Sometimes this works really well. I'm often asked what size of brass I'm using, and I always forget to look, but it's about 0.023 inches or 0.5 millimeters. But I'm getting different readings everywhere, so who knows. That's 0.020, so somewhere around there. Actually, I think it's sold in America as 0.025 inches. To recreate this piece, I'm just going to scratch in the size. So the hot sauce stained a little bit, but I think it's better. I'm just going to sand it now. That'll at least conduct electricity now. I now have my little brass piece. It's going to go right in there like that. So now I can just solder this. Okay, I'm going to be making the red button, and I'm using the Smoothcast 325. Now, if I was to put the red pigment in here, and then pour this and use my pressure pot, this stuff would come out crystal clear. It'd be like I made a ruby or something. But this time, I'm not going to use the pressure pot, because I don't want it to be clear. This time, I'm going to try my powdered pigments. Now I just have to clear out this area so that these little buttons fit in here like so. I think I used a Dremel last time. I'm going with an X-Acto knife this time. Seems to work just fine. First needs to be flattened down and then a little notch cut out for the little wing. All the little plastic buttons are done. Time for this to go back together.
So I found some of this really cool vinyl strapping that is the same brown as this is, where this one over here is black and kind of has a black strap. This is a dark brown, and I found this perfect dark brown. Now this strap is very similar, except this is more plasticky feeling and very stiff, where this is very leathery feeling and very soft. This one is also put on by Brad's. I'm just going to sew these, but I think it's still going to be pretty cool. Maybe something like that. Well, there it is. That's spot on. If you didn't know what to look for, you would swear that's exactly how it's supposed to be. I think it came out great. Goes good with my other one. But you want to see it in action. Well, it's not easy, but I got some video footage of it. This is what it looks like. This is the game. There's actually a really fun game here. It's basically there's three lanes. You can be in either one of the three lanes and so can the cars. As the cars come by they don't change lanes so whatever lane you see them in they're going to stay in there. Most of the time it's just moving back and forth and sometimes you get an easy pass and just a fly by. Then other time it's a cluster and so you kind of have to ease off of the accelerator and then let them mix up and so you can finally get by. I guess it goes by time because it doesn't go by how many cars you pass and when the race is over all the points you got from passing the cars are doubled and then you get three more lives for the next race and of course the difficulty level increases. So now I have a working thundering turbo and a working sky attack. There's at least one more that I know of called Planet Xeon. Maybe I'll get a hold of that sometime. But if you like this video, sure would appreciate a like. If you want to see more stuff like this, well then I suggest you subscribe. I want to thank these people right here. These are patrons. These are people helping me out. I couldn't do it without them. I thank them so, so very, very much. Please, see if you want to help support, check out the links below. There's other links. Go check out my store. Hey, anyway, thanks for watching. See you next time. So, yeah, you can just hang this around your neck. Be ready to just play anytime you want to. Just be ready. Makes you cool. Watch. Boom.